Hey everyone, in this particular video we are going to look at why new Christians and Christians who have been walking with Jesus for a long time should not be surprised, should not be amazed or astonished or even grieved by the fact that they may sin every once in a while or they may fall into temptation or they that we'll screw up, not just they, it applies to me as well, that we'll all screw up even though we know Jesus. So this is something that I, I would like for the new Christians to be mindful of and for all of us um, long-time Christians to be reminded of, to be aware of, because we'll all fail. And we're going to just look at a few verses today that actually supports uh, this particular truth. All right, so let's go ahead and look at uh, the following verses, Second Chronicles 7.14, Romans 7.14 through 25, and then 1 John 1, 8 through 10. Second Chronicles 7.14 says, If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Obviously, this is God telling his people because it says, if my people who are called by my name, and this applies to us because we are Christians. We are called by the name of Christ. Does that make sense? So we are Christians. Now God is saying, if we humble ourselves and pray and seek his face and turn from our wicked ways, then I will hear from a heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. This is God's promise. So heal their land is really you know we could use it as a metaphor because when he was speaking to them they're farmers and you know they take care of the land and all of that stuff but for us what's our land um our land could be our job our, it could be our health it could be our relationships it doesn't matter what god is trying to say is you're called by my name you will do stupid things you will do wicked things and you will sin but god promises us that if we humble ourselves if we pray, that is, have conversation with him, confess to him, praise him, adore him, all of these things, seek his face. Obviously, you cannot humble yourself and then pray. Who are you going to pray to? You're obviously going to seek God's face and then turn from their wicked, turn from the wicked ways, turn from our wicked ways. And then God says, I will hear from heaven and will forgive uh, your sin, forgive our sin, and heal our land, heal us. So clearly from this verse, we can say that, wait a minute, God is speaking to his people, God is speaking to us, and he's talking about wicked ways and sin. It is very clear that, yes, Christians will sin. So that's from the Old Testament, Second Chronicles 7.14. I'm kind of rushing through this because I don't want to dwell on any one of these verses and I would much rather if you guys actually go in and read some of these verses and look at other stories, uh, you know, things like David. I mean, if you look at it, David is a man after God's own heart according to the Bible and yet being such a faithful man, such a godly man, he still sinned with Bathsheba he ended up killing Uriah so that she, he could marry Bathsheba and all of those things. So don't ever look in the mirror and say you're a bad Christian, you're a terrible Christian. Don't let the devil come in, you know, uh, through someone else or through a weak Christian or perhaps someone in the world come and tell you, oh, what kind of a Christian are you? You did this, you did that. Don't ever give ear to that. Because what you should be doing is opening up your Bible and humbling yourself and praying to God and seeking God's face and turning from that which you have done wrong, which is repentance, and then spending time with God so that he can heal you and, for, and you can experience the forgiveness that God has promised you. Now we look at Romans 7, 14 through 25. It's a lengthy passage, so bear with me. We know that the law is spiritual. But I am unspiritual, sold as a slave to sin. I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. As it is, it is no longer I myself who do it, but it is sin living in me. I know that nothing good lives in me that is in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, 
but I cannot carry it out. For what I do is not the good I want to do. No, the evil I do not want to do. This I keep on doing. Now if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it is sin living in me that does it. So I find this law at work. When I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For in my inner being, I delight in God's law. But I see another law at work in the members of my body, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within my members. What a wretched man I am! Who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then, I myself in my mind am a slave to God's law, but in the sinful nature a slave to the law of sin. So here's Paul writing to the Romans, and Paul is speaking about himself. And Paul, you know, you call him a super apostle, whatever you want to call him, Paul was an ordinary human being just like you and I. And here he is really pouring his heart out. And what is he saying? Paul's saying in his mind, in his heart, he wants to live by God's word. And I would like to think that if you're watching this video, and I, I'd like to think for myself as well, that we want to live God's word. We want to live according to God's word. We want to live a life that is pleasing to God. But Paul says here that there's a different law at work in our sinful body. Our sinful body wants to do sinful things. Now, I'm not trying to say that, oh yeah, that means, you know, we are completely absolved of all the stuff that we might do. No, the, our mind and everything else is involved. But the sin that we are talking about today is not living in sin. If you were to do that which you are doing wrong every single day without any repentance, without any care or concern or worry or sorrow in your heart because you have sinned against God, then you are living in sin. Then you need to really look at you know, your relationship with Jesus and even ask yourself, are you a Christian? Do you really have a relationship with Jesus? So we're not talking about that kind of continual, constant, every day, all the time sin. We're talking about the one-off stuff, you know, you could have a couple of days where, you know, you're close to God and then all of a sudden temptations come and they get you and your, you know, your sinful body just falls to that temptation or you do something wrong. So we're talking about the one-off sins, not the everyday sin. So here Paul's saying that he has every desire to do that which is right, that which is godly, that which is according to God's law, that which he knows pleases God. But he says there's something else at work, and they're waging war against him. So his sinful flesh is waging war against the Spirit of God that is in him. So two people warring against each other, and that's what Paul is saying. And I, I, I don't know about you, but I can tell you that this is, I fully agree with Paul, because I know deep in my heart that I love the Lord, and I do want to live a life that honors Him all the time. But I'll also be the first to admit that that is sadly not the case. And almost every day, I sin against the Lord. In fact, this morning as I was driving to work, I was thinking to myself, okay, there's 60 seconds every minute. If I were to just do something wrong or think something or say something once every couple of minutes, the number of sins that I would commit every day would number in the thousands. So I know that every day I fail and I fall short of the glory of God. So Paul is trying to encourage us by giving his own story and sharing his own story with us. And he, like, like him, we should cry out to the Lord, who will save me? What a wretched man am I? Who will save me from this body of death? Praise be to God, Jesus Christ. And that should be your prayer, your cry to God. And that is my cry to God saying, Lord, there there are things at war within me. I do want to live according to your word, but I don't. And every once in a while I fail. And uh, dear Christian, whether you're a new Christian or a Christian who's been walking with Jesus for a long time, it doesn't matter. Don't ever let the enemy, let the devil beat you down. Let anyone else beat you down saying, oh, what kind of a Christian are you? You know, good Christians and solid Christians and mature Christians never make mistakes and never commit sins. So therefore something's wrong with you. Don't ever believe that lie because that's exactly what it is. It's a lie. When you fail, just come to the Lord.
whenever you falter, whenever you fumble, whenever you say something wrong, think something wrong, do something wrong, it doesn't matter. Remember, just come to Christ and cry out to God and saying, Lord, I'm a wretched man with a body of death. Save me. Only you can save me. All right. So now we go on to the last verse that we're going to be looking at, which is 1 John 1, 8 through 10. And this verse says, If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar, and his word has no place in our lives. 1 John 1, 8 through 10 is very comforting for me as a Christian, and it should be comforting to you as a new believer, or if you're a long-term Christian, to you as well. What does uh, these verses say? Basically says that as a Christian, you will sin. And if you walk around saying you don't sin, then you're basically lying to yourself, lying to other people, and then the truth is not in you and you're calling God a liar. It is God who tells us in his word that we will sin. But how comforting it is for us because look at God's promise to us. God tells us that he is faithful to forgive us if we confess our sins. And he doesn't just forgive us. He also cleanses us of all unrighteousness. So whatever it is that we did, if we confess with humility, and again going back to Second Chronicles 7.14, we come with all humility before God, we confess that which we have done wrong or said wrong or whatever. And God tells us that he will forgive us. That's his promise. Um, I'm reminded of the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector in Luke 18, 9 through 14. So this super religious guy is, you know, um, looking down on everyone else and pretty much just bragging about his own righteousness and all the things that he does as this great believer. And there are many Christians like that. But then look at the tax collector who stands at a distance, says that it didn't, he didn't even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God have mercy on me, a sinner. I believe that's the kind of Christians we ought to be. I know every day this is exactly what I do. Of course, I may not physically beat my breast, but in my mind, in my heart, I am crying out to God saying, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Now, we've just only looked at a few verses. You know, we've, uh, I briefly mentioned the story of David uh, sinning against Bathsheba. Look it up. It's an encouraging story. And then read Psalm 51, which is David's um, psalm in response to his uh, sin against Bathsheba. There are so many stories in the Bible that we could touch it that I could have uh, brought up. I just focused on these few verses. The main point is, for you as a new believer, you should realize that you will make mistakes. You are going to fail. You might say something wrong. You might do something wrong. Something that you have struggled with all your life may crop up every once in a while. I know it is true for me. I may not tell you exactly what it is, but I can tell you, I can assure you that I fail on a constant basis and I have to keep going back to the Lord and claim 1 John, excuse me, 1 John 1, 8 through 10, um, the promise of God. I have to claim it whenever I fail, not if I fail, not if I sin. Whenever I sin, I go back to the Lord and seek His forgiveness and ask Him for His help. Ask Him to cleanse me and to keep me, help me keep walking on the straight and narrow path. And I pray that you as a, as a Christian, as a fellow brother or sister, I pray that you will find encouragement in this video and you will not, you will not um, have a sad heart or a disappointed heart and then just completely turn away from God because the enemy or someone else makes you believe or makes you think that as a Christian you should never sin. That is not true. If you have any questions or you know want to drop me a line, please feel free to do so and I'll do the best I can to serve you, to be of some help, to be uh, a blessing to you. God bless you. Thanks for watching.